the first thing you want to do is go to theblueprints.com. Next, you want to click on the Blueprints database. Since we're making a car, we're going to click on Cars, or we can click on the picture of a car. Now you're going to want to find the automaker that's uh, responsible for making the type of car that you're making. So for example, if you're making a Ferrari, you're going to click on Ferrari. In this case, we're going to be making a Chevrolet, so click on Chevrolet. Now you have a couple of options. You can look through all, this, all the, the cars that are in this list, or you can use a quick search if you already know which type of car you'd like to make. So in this case, we're going to do a quick search and search for Spark. And then press Enter. This will bring up a list of all the cars that are named with Spark. So we have the model years of 2005, or 2000 to 2005, for example. But for this one, I'm going to do 2016 to present, so I'm going to left click on this. And one thing that's important to note before we actually do this, I'm going to go back for one second, is that when you're making a car, it's very helpful if you have the front, top, rear, and the side view. And all of these have the front, top, rear, and side view, which is shown to us because of these check marks. If we look at this one, for example, it doesn't have a check mark on the front or top which means it only has the rear and side view, so it's going to be more difficult to use this image if you're trying to make this car. Fortunately for us, we have all the views with this one, so I'm going to click on this one. This picture here is actually quite a bit small, and it would be difficult to use this to model. In order to get a bigger per picture, all we have to do is right-click, and choose inspect. Keep in mind that I'm using Google Chrome and the steps to do this might be different if you have a different browser. I'm not exactly sure how you would do it with a different browser but if you're using Google Chrome this is how you would do it. So now we have this picture right here which is the image source right there but we want to go up a bit and then right click on this link and choose open link in a new tab. This will bring up a bigger picture and it will be a lot easier to model with this so we're going to left click to zoom in and make it even bigger still and now we're going to right click choose save image as. By default I have it set up to save to my desktop just be aware of where you're saving it. Remember where it's being saved so that you can find it when you're loading it into Blender. I'm going to leave the name as it is and choose Save. We're done with this for now, so you can either close it or minimize it. I'm just going to minimize it. You can see now we have our reference image right here. I'm going to leave it here for now and you should open up Blender if you don't have it open already. Mine's open so I'm just going to maximize the window. This is your default scene. This is actually closed normally. So in order to open that window we're just going to left click on this little plus button. Alternatively when your mouse is in this part of the window, you can press the N key to open up that window. Now we're going to scroll down to the bottom, put a check mark on background images because we're going to be using a background image, left click on this triangle to expand, and click on add image. We're going to need four images, so I'm going to click on Add Image four times. The four images that we're going to need are for the top view, front view, 
side view and back view. It's not really important which one you start with, but we're just going to press this open button to open an image. I saved my image to the desktop, so I'm going to click on desktop and I'm going to locate my image of the Chevy Spark. And now I'm going to choose open image. You'll notice that it doesn't display the image immediately and that's because we're not in front view, side view, top view, or any of those special views. So in order to get in those special views, you're going to use 1, 3, and 7 on your number pad, which is the keys all the way to the right. To start out, I usually do side view, so I'm going to press 3 on the number pad, which will bring us into right view. You can also, you can still see that we don't have our image behind, and that's because we are in perspective view. To change from perspective to orthographic, we're going to press 5 on the number pad. And now it says ortho, and we can see our image. So we're going to zoom in with the mouse wheel to get a better look at this. And we actually don't need the cube or any of these other objects right now, so we're going to press A twice to select everything and then press the delete key and click delete to confirm that that's what we would like to do. Now we're going to zoom in with the mouse wheel to get a better look at this and to set up right view or side view what we want to do is have the front of the car lined up with this blue line and we want the wheels of the car to be just above this green line so essentially this green line would be the ground, so to speak, and we want the front to be lined up with this blue line. So to do that, if we go up a little, we have these sliders right here which will allow us to move the image. So if we click and drag on these sliders, we can move left to right. And if we click and drag on this slider, we can move up and down. If we hold shift while we're clicking and dragging, you'll notice that it moves a lot slower. This will help you make much more finer adjustments in order to line up your car perfectly with the front and the wheels, for example. So I'm going to zoom in a little more and use shift in the middle mouse to pan your view like this to move around. And I'm gonna line up the wheels again by dragging, holding shift, to slowly move this picture into place. Right about there should be fine. Now that we've done that, we want to make sure that instead of showing this particular picture in all of our views, we want to left click on this and choose right view, because we only want to see this picture while we're in the right view. Now that we have this view all set up, we can left click on this triangle to close this window. And now we're going to work on top view, so we're going to open up our image, but we're going to do it a different way this time. Since we've already loaded our image, we can just left click on this, and then choose the image that we've already loaded of the Chevy Spark. You'll notice that it now overlays this new image over the one that we just previously lined up. And that's because we have this set to right view and this set to all views. So instead, we're going to change this from all views to the top view. And to do that, all I had to do was left click here and then left click on top view. So if we go to top view by pressing seven on the number pad, we can now see our second image that we uploaded, which of course is the same as the first, just in a different position. So for this one, top view is right here. And when we're making a car, the way that we want this to be aligned is we want the front of the car to be lined up with the x-axis, which is this red line right here. 
and we want the center of the car to be lined up with this green line. In order for that to happen, we have to rotate this image 90 degrees in this direction, which would be counterclockwise, in other words, negative 90. This value right here is the rotation. You can see that it's at zero. If we left click here and type in negative 90, we've now rotated the image negative 90 degrees, or counterclockwise, 90 degrees. Now we're going to repeat the process of moving the image into place. Again, left clicking and dragging, left clicking, dragging and holding shift to move more slowly. Move it left and right, trying to position it centered with this green line. Move it up and down, trying to position it with the front slightly above this red line. Usually with vehicles, you'll have some sort of thing in the center that will help you center the car. It may be an emblem on the front of the car, or in this case, we have this back of the car, which should be a good indication of where the center is. So we'll use this to try to line up the image from a left and right standpoint. So continue clicking and dragging, and in this case, holding shift to make very small adjustments. If you find that you can't use either method, either clicking left and clicking and dragging or clicking and holding shift to line it up, and you find you still need to make a small adjustment, you can always add in extra numbers. So for example, you can left click here to highlight it, left click again and add a 5 at the end to move it ever so slightly into a perfect position. Now that the top view is all set, we're going to click on this triangle to hide all of these settings. Next, we're going to do front view. So we're going to again click here, click on the Chevy Spark, and we're going to change this from all views to front view. Now we're going to press 1 on the number pad to bring us into front view, as you can see up here. When you're using blueprints like this, they're intended to be lined up such that the front and side view can be positioned perfectly with each other. So we know where the floor should be already because of this picture that we lined up in the right view. So if we open up the right view again, we can actually steal one of these values and I do believe it is this one. So if we left click here so that it's highlighted and we do control C to copy and then right click to remove the highlight and then again minimize this window by left clicking it. We can go down here, left click here and control V to paste and then press enter and we now have at least as far as the x-axis is concerned, we have it lined up perfectly. So now all we have to do is move this slider until we have the car in position. Again, we want it centered with this blue line. Zoom in if you need to with the mouse wheel, shift and middle mouse to pan your view and continue making adjustments by left clicking, dragging, and holding shift if necessary until you have it relatively centered. You can take extra time to center it more perfectly when you're making yours, but for now I'm going to leave it like this. Again, remember you can add extra numbers to the end of this, such as a 5 if you want to move it over, or you can change this to a 3 which would center it more perfectly. So now our front view is set up, and you'll notice one thing about front view and back view. They are actually perfectly aligned in the center, so we can use this center point value when we do the back view. So I'm going to left click here to highlight this number, press Control C to copy this number, right click to get rid of the highlight, and we're going to close this now, or minimize it, since we no longer need it. Now we're going to set up back view, 
So click on this and load up the Chevy Spark image. Change this to back view. Now we're going to press Control and 1 to go into back view. Control does the opposite. So if we press Control and 1, we will do back view because pressing 1 would have been front view. And for example, pressing Control and 7 would do bottom view because 7 is top view. So press Control and 1 and we'll set up back view. Remember, as I mentioned, we've already copied the value for this center line. So we're going to just left click here, Control V to paste that value, and then press Enter, which will perfectly center it as far as the front view and back view are concerned. So now we're going to hold Shift and click and drag this until we line it up with the wheels again. You want the wheels to be lined up with the red axis. Now that we have all of this set up with right, top, front, and back view, we can minimize this by left clicking. And you can check your views by pressing 1 for front view, 3 for side view, 7 for top view, and control 1 for back view. And now we should be all set to get started with modeling our car.